Tink, this title here, uh, salt water, okay, uh, processing, okay, uh, could potentially Okay, uh, provide a source okay, of fresh water of, of fresh water. <laughs> now, which is already we call as the desalinization. So to mention this point here. Now, desalinization or desalination, okay, is basically is the process of uh, removing Dissolved salt okay, from ocean water. From ocean water, or of course, or we call it from Breakish water. Breakish water means slightly salty. That means uh, slightly salty, but of course, from breakish water. Okay, from breakish water. Basically, we call it an aquiferous. Or, of course, or base. <coughs> okay. And now at the moment, of course, we have the R and this, uh, the desalinization, we have mainly two main uh, widely used method, okay? One, basically, and it's basically a kind of distillation, and the other one known as reserve osmosis. So we're going to mention about each one of these at the moment. Now, uh, sorry, uh, as I mentioned, currently, okay, uh, currently, the two most widely uh, used basically methods for desalinating water are, as I mentioned to you, one is known as distillation. Okay, as I told you, one is known as distillation, and the other one known as reserve osmosis. Okay, uh, of course, I'll uh, talk about, of course, in case of distillation, okay, which is simply as a matter of fact, uh, involves, okay, this basically this involves, uh, simply, of course, heating, 
Okay, salt water. until it evaporates. Okay, and leaving behind Okay, uh, salt as you know, in a, basically we call it in a solid form. Okay, in a solid form. And of course, as already with that case, of course, the water vapor is condensed and so on, intimation. And the water vapor is then cooled and condenses. And as I mentioned, and the water vapor, in this case here, uh, okay, is then uh, cooled, okay, and uh, condenses, okay, as a fresh water. Okay. Now with regard to uh, 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 reserve osmosis, okay, and this one basically uses what you call high pressure with higher pressure to force, okay, uh, to force basically the salt water, okay, uh, through a membrane filter. Okay, with pores. And basically these pores are so small, basically that means uh, 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 that will remove basically the salt particle and other impurities. Okay, through a membrane filter, as a matter of fact here, okay, with pores small enough Okay, uh, small enough to remove salt. Okay, to remove salt and other impurities. Okay. And usually, of course, after uh, going through the membrane, of course, it's going to use the water, and of course, the, all the minerals and waste are being flushed away. And to mention uh, this point here, after passing through the membrane, okay, After passing through the membrane, a fresh water, okay, is collected. And of course, and waste uh, minerals, okay, and waste minerals, as a matter of fact, are flushed away. Okay. Uh, there are only a few places, of course, in the world they use basically desalinization plant. 
and to mention about uh, totally a role on the planet, as a matter of fact, that this uh, decentralization offer basically 0.3%, okay, of the uh, of the world's demand on fresh water, to mention this point for you there. Now, desalinization supply less than Okay, uh, supplies or sorry, supply or supplies. Okay, uh, less than as I mentioned, point uh, three percent. Okay, of the world's demands. Of the world's uh, demand basically, or demands, okay, for a fresh water. Okay. Now there are basically, uh, going to talk about, uh, there are three main, uh, what you call factors, which are basically, uh, not allowing this decentralization become what you call more popular or more useful uh, used because it has many other uh, impact to mention to you. There are three main problems. There are three main uh, problems, as I mentioned to you, uh, that basically uh, prevent Okay, uh, desalinization or desalination, okay, from being more widely used. Okay, uh, some of these basically going to talk about it here. One of them is, as a matter of fact, these are quite costly. To mention desalination, okay, is costly uh, because removing salt this is removing when I put it down here. Okay, because uh, uh, removing salt, as a matter of fact, uh, from seawater, okay, from uh, uh, seawater requires a lot of energy. Okay. Now the other point I'm going to mention, of course, when you pump a lot of water, uh, what you call in the pipe and so on, of course you need all the time to sterilize this, to put chemical to prevent algae growing and so on and so on. So basically all that will add more uh, to these, uh, uh, what you call values to mention. Pumping large volume of seawater Okay, pumping large volume of seawater. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, through a uh, pipelines. Okay, uh, as a matter of fact, requires uh, chemicals. Okay, to sterilize the water. And also, and preventing, as I mentioned, algal or algae growth. 
and preventing and preventing algae growth. Uh, do you see this well, please? I'm talking because I can see some shade here. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Preventing what you call algae growth. Now, uh, basically, of course, when they're going to pump all that again to the to the ocean or to the sea, and especially when the water is going to go back again, which is more resaline, and that, of course, is going to kill a lot of other what you call marine organisms. To mention this point here, this kills many marine organisms. Okay, many marine organisms, okay, and require also uh, what you call quite a bit of energy and requires large output of energy and requires a large input. Of energy and of course, and money. Okay. Uh, and also, as you mentioned, you hear basically that that desalination itself. Okay, uh, produces. Okay, uh, huge quantities. of salt waste. I'm going to put down here. Okay, uh, produce a huge quantities, okay, of uh, salt wastes And of course, this have to go back again to the ocean, which is really is, uh, okay, salt waste, that requires a proper disposals. Okay. Uh, did you finish on this one? If you finish, I want to put back here so that best will continue. Okay. Salt water that require what you call um, uh, proper disposal. Okay. Now, also to mention the other point that dumping salt water into the coastal ocean, uh, dumping. Uh, salt water, okay, into coastal. Uh, oceans, okay, to mention this point, Ocean. increases the salinity of those water. Okay, of those waters and also and also and also threaten food resources and threatens uh, food resources. and aquatic life. OK. 
aquatic and aquatic life, uh, especially if that water in the ocean, for example, being dumped near what you call a coral reef or other areas, which basically is going to damage it and affect these uh, organisms. And to mention this point here, okay, resources, what you call certain food resources and aquatic life, okay, and to mention, and especially if it is dumped. Okay, if it's dumped as a matter of fact, for example, near uh, coral reefs, okay, or marshes, okay, or mangrove forest. Okay. And also the other thing that if you uh, if you dump that salt water on the land, uh, of course going to increase and maybe that also goes down and percolate what you call to the groundwater. To mention this point here, disposing of salt waste. Sorry. Okay, disposing of salt waste on land. Uh, to mention this one also, uh, can, con, okay, on land. Okay, uh, can contaminate. In this case, of course, the groundwater. And also at the same time, and surface water. Okay. Now, currently to mention, of course, only few countries in the world, they do it because these countries are the really, they lack what you call any source of fresh water. And at the same time, of course, it can cost quite a bit of money to do that. Now, currently desalination, okay, is it, pra is it practical? Okay, only for water. Short countries. Short countries and cities and also and cities, of course, that can afford its high cost. Okay. Now, of course, this, uh, the scientists are already working as a matter of fact here. They try as a matter of fact to improve it and also to reduce its cost and also to work again to minimize what you call the impact has of the, of the waste saline water into the either into the land or into the ocean back again all, all that and to make this point however scientists okay uh, scientists and engineers are 
are working. Okay, they are working to develop. Okay, better and more affordable desalination technology. Affordable desalination. Okay, desalination technologies. Okay. And also, as I mentioned, uh, and also they are working to minimize the environmental impact. They are also working, as I mentioned to you, to minimize. Okay, environmental impacts okay, environmental impacts okay, from construction and operating or an operation of desalination plants. Impact from what you call the construction, okay, and operation of plant, okay. Now, this is basically we talk about the, uh, the other technology being used as a matter of fact to uh, provide the fresh water. Uh, the other point I'm going to mention to you, of course, uh, that people or how to make use, uh, try to reduce the waste of water. Okay. And especially now with all uh, the pollution and so on. Now, to mention reducing a fresh water losses. Subtitle. Reducing losses. Uh, basically, the expert mentioned that if basically, if the people, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, what do you call? Uh, They reduce the supply, there is enough water for everyone to make sure this point. Expert says that the word fresh water okay, that the word fresh water uh, needs Okay, uh, can be met if supplies are used wisely. Okay. One of the methods, of course, because as you know, basically agriculture and irrigation uh, takes most of this fresh water. So basically that there is, of course, improving the irrigation system. Sometimes they use like the drop system and so on. All that, as a matter of fact, it will help to reduce what you call the uh, losses or use of what you call of fresh water. To mention this point here. Now, improving irrigation practices.
okay, uh, would, as a matter of fact, okay, uh, would achieve, okay, uh, the largest reduction in water loss will achieve uh, uh, the largest uh, reduction Okay, in water loss. Okay. And now, basically, according to this reference or these sources of information, I try to mention that this, the other way also to add to this, basically, if the government or this basically try as a matter of fact uh, to reduce their subsidies of the water. That means to make it more expensive so that people as a matter of fact will make use it more wisely. So this basically to mention this point. Now other, okay, other reductions, okay, uh, would result Okay, would result as a matter of fact, from reducing governmental or government subsidies. Okay. Uh, some disease, okay. And uh, basically that happened here, you repair the infrastructure of the cities and everything, uh, it have to go with that. Repairing infrastructure of cities. In front. the infrastructure of cities, okay, and also increase, increasing water reuses. Increasing, okay, water reuses, okay, and educating the public Uh, okay, uh, basically about water conservation. Okay. So basically this is a, a, a very summarized uh, point of view here. Uh, basically to mention as a matter of fact that in general, if the people were make use of the water wisely and so on, as a matter of fact, it's going to, in the end, we can meet the demands, okay? And just to mention one of the points, which is really take a lot of water, basically in, it is the form of irrigation. Now, basically, the, now we've come to about the pollution of the water. Of course, we have what is known as point pollution or point source pollution and non-point source pollution. To make this point here now, as a separate thing, water pollution, okay, comes from point Sorry, it comes from point and non point sources. So we have a point here and non point sources. Now, uh, to mention, of course, that water pollution. OK, 
okay? Can come, okay, uh, from single point sources. Okay, from a single point sources, uh, okay, or from a large and dispersed sources, or from large, sorry, okay, and dispersed. This, of course, what you call. Uh, uh, Okay, the non point or non point source from comes from many area or from larger and dispersed, okay, larger and dispersed uh, sources. Of course, in this case, when come from large and dispersed sources, this is known as what you call a non point source. Okay, because the first one was from a point source, it would come from a single source, okay, like from factories, uh, uh, something like that is a matter of fact here, okay, or garbage sometimes, like something like this, okay. This is, uh, this is an example of what you call as a point source, okay, or this one here as a matter of fact known as a point source water pollution, okay. This shows to you all the plastic bottles and so on. Now, talk about this one here a little bit here. Okay. <clears throat> so, simply talk about here basically that uh, point source or point sources. Okay, point sources. Discharge. Pollution, okay, into bodies of surface water. Okay, and the bodies of surface water, of course, at a specific location. Okay, at a specific uh, location, okay? And basically, as you can see, usually this is through ditches as a matter of fact, or sewer, or sewer line and so on, okay? To mention this point here, often or often, through, okay, uh, ditches, okay, or sewer line. Okay. Like for example, like factories, what to call sewage treatment and so on. Okay. Uh, examples. Uh, basically, in this case, include, okay, factories, okay, uh, sewage treatment, okay, sewage treatment plants, Okay. Now, one thing, of course, about the point sources, a matter of fact, at least you know where is the source of having the, uh, that is at least the only uh, uh, to mention uh, uh, some of the advantage now. Okay, to mention this point here now. 
point sources okay exist definition of this one okay we'll put that here so that you can move this one here okay now as i mentioned to you here now that point sources exist in specific places Okay, exist in specific places. Okay, so they are relatively okay. So they are relatively, as a matter of fact, easy to identify. They are easy to identify at the same time, okay, and also and to mo and monitor. And of course, and regulate. Okay. This is basically an example to give us about what you call a source of water pollution. Then, of course, the non point so source basically is abroad, okay, and diffused, of course, in the ground wherever there is a rain. To make this point here, non point sources now the non point sources are broad and diffuse area. Are broad, okay, and diffuse and diffuse areas, okay, okay. Now, of course, what happened in this area now, where rainfall. Okay, when rainfall, as a matter of fact, uh, to mention that or snow melts, or or snow melts. Okay, that pushes or washes. In this case, a pollutant. which is the pollutants, of the land, okay, into bodies of surface water. Okay. Uh, this is basically include like uh, runoff and so on, okay, and chemicals and fertilizer from uh, cropland and so on. To make this point here, example of this one. Okay, examples. For example, include. Okay, uh, runoff. Runoff of eroded, okay, of eroded soil and chemicals. Okay, uh, such as fertilizers and pesticides.
and pesticide, which is comes, of course, from cropplants. Okay. Uh, As, okay, fertilizer and uh, okay, such as fertilizer from crop plants, okay, and also to mention like logged forest. Okay, uh, city streets. Okay. And all that, the parking lot, lawns, and so on. City street, uh, parking lawns, or lots, okay, and lawns, and also on golf courses. Okay. And that's why it's very difficult, for example, to control the pollution from uh, from uh, not a single source, okay, or, or not one source, okay? And to mention this point here, okay? Now, controlling water pollution, okay? Uh, controlling water pollution, all right, uh, from a non point source, from non point source or source in this case here, okay, is challenging. is challenging and it is difficult to okay and also at the same time is expensive and it is uh, difficult okay and also and expensive as a matter of fact we call to identify Okay, and of course, and control as well at the same time and control the discharge. Okay. Charges that this is basically from many diffuse sources. Okay. So, as I mentioned, we are basically controlling water pollution from a non point source is challenging and it is difficult. And also, and expensive, as I mentioned to you here, and expensive uh, to identify and to control the discharges from many different, of course, I mean, sources from many different polluted or pollution sources. That's what is uh, the, the point here. Okay, now. Now, to give you some example of this one here, for example, example like this one of the none point here, examples. Okay. Uh, include, for example, a runoff of eroded soil and chemicals. Example to make in point here. Okay. Uh, runoff. When I put this down here, okay.
एग्जाम्पल बात रन ऑफ ओके ऑफ इरोडेड ओके ऑफ इरोडेड सोयल्स and chemicals okay such as fertilizer and pesticide okay and pesticide and okay and pesticide Now, to mention a few one, okay, this is just an example to you. Now, according to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, according to the U.S. Environmental Okay, Environmental Protection a Agency. Okay, uh, the the non-point source pollution, like the non-point source, the the non-point uh, source. Okay, or source in this case here. Okay, in this case. The non point source, as a matter of fact, is the pollution. The non point source pollution is considered, as a matter of fact, one is the main reason. Okay, is the main reason why 40%. of U.S. rivers, okay, of U.S. say rivers, okay, lakes, and use trees, okay, are still not clean enough. Okay, are still not clean enough. For example, for recreation like fishing and boating and so on, because of these, this point here. <coughs> As I mentioned, the main reason why 40% of us river lakes and, and use trees, this is use trees, all right? Uh, to mention to you here, are still not clean. Are still not clean enough for fishing. And I guess, on, and also swimming. Okay. And swimming, despite Okay, uh, the passage okay. of major water pollution of major water. Pollution uh, control 
basically this one uh, live almost or least 40 years ago. Control, laws, 40 years ago. That means in spite of all that, these laws has been issued almost like 40 years ago to, okay, but it's still not able not to call to, uh, uh, okay, this one, okay. Now to mention the other thing here, Usually we have basically to mention some of these factors, okay? We have one of these factors, as a matter of fact, is agriculture. Called agricultural activities. Okay. I'm going to read for you because it really is it's not that difficult. And then if you want me, I will put it down. Now, as I mentioned, agricultural activities are by far, are you following me okay, please? Let me stop if you're okay, because I want to finish this one here. Agricultural activities are by far the leading source of water pollution. So agricultural activities are by far the leading source of water pollution. Okay. Because this is what comes from them. Fertilizers. Uh, pesticides. And also and bacteria. Okay, because of fertilizer, pesticide, bacteria, of course, from live stocks, from live stocks. Okay, and food processing wastes. And food processing waste. And also to mention, and excess salts from irrigated soils. Okay, I'm just going to repeat this again, that agricultural activities are by far the leading source of water pollution, such as I mentioned between two brackets, if you want to put this on, like fertilizer, pesticide, bacteria from living stocks, and food processing waste, and food processing waste, and excess salts and excess salts from irrigated soils. Did you follow this okay? Good. Uh, if, you, if you just think sometime you can put something for me in the chat and I can see it. Okay, if you wish now. Uh, the other point I'm going to mention to you here. Okay. That point source. Okay. Point source from industrial facilities. Point source from industrial facilities that emit a variety of harmful chemicals. So point source from industrial facilities that emit a variety of harmful chemicals Of course, here is just being considered are the second largest source of water pollution, are the second largest source of water pollution. Okay. 
Okay? So we talk about the points of from industrial factor. Now, the other point I'm going to mention to you here, basically considering from mining. Okay? Uh, that mining is the third largest source of surface. Okay? Mining is the third largest source. Okay? And to mention some of their impact, for example, here, like surface mining disrupt or disturb the land. Okay, so under mining, which as I mentioned, is the large is the third largest. Because sometimes the mining they have some waste. Really, I just uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I just uh, I was looking for some, because sometimes it, uh, the oxidation from the uh, precipitate is very bad. So when I come across it, then I will show it to you here. Yeah, maybe this one, I guess, yeah. Okay. As you can see here, for example, this is what we call, for example, uh, either, for example, uh, uh, this goes inside from the disposal, or as I mentioned, there is, for example, in North America, over 30,000 mines are leaking toxic waste to North Americans. Okay, so and especially that is the leaks comes from, especially some of the tailings, which get uh, oxidized. And of course, all that, if it's not being taken care of, is going to, to reach to the lakes and underground water and so on. Just to mention this point here. Okay. So just, okay. So as I mentioned to you here that, and this, uh, the third point I mentioned that mining is the third largest source. Okay. Now surface mining disrupt the land. Surface mining disrupt the land. Okay. Okay. Which in turn it may lead to a major erosion. Which in turn it may lead to a major erosion of sediments. It may lead to a major erosion of sediments. And of course, and runoff. Oh, sorry, just to mention to you here. Because what happened here, because when I talk about the agricultural activities, you remember, this is mentioned is by, by far is the largest source of water pollution. Then we talk about point source from industrial facilities. Okay, so this one you can consider it more or less like the second. Is that clear? Okay. And then of course mining, it comes the third after that. Is that clear? Okay, now. So as I mentioned, mining is the third largest source of surface, okay? Because mining, what you call surface mining, disrupt the land, which in turn leads to a major erosion of sediments. In turn lead to a major erosion of sediments and also a runoff of toxic chemicals. Okay, now, so basically these are, we mentioned about the agriculture and industrial facilities, okay, because already you remember when I mentioned the second point here, that I'm going to mention the point here, okay, when I point what you call point source from industrial facilities that emit a variety of harmful chemical are the second largest source of water pollution. 
okay? And then I follow it by mining is the third largest source, okay? And they mentioned that surface mining, this term is called the land, which is in turn lead to a major erosion of sediment and runoff of toxic chemicals. Now, uh, then we're going to talk about uh, other important factor really here, basically what you call basically the plastic bottles, okay? So I'm going to use this page here just in case if I need to make more clarification. Now, American drinks about, American drinks about basically 1,500, American drink about 1,500 bottles, okay, of water every second. Okay. And that's why basically what happened here, the recycling process cannot keep up with this. The recycling only, the, it can take only about 38% of this amount, huge amount which is, are being deposited. So to mention this point, American drink about 1500 bottle of water every second, but recycle only 38%, 38% of we call it of the 50 billion empty plastic water bottles, 50 billion, okay, empty plastic bottles, okay, and this amount basically which is generate only every year, okay, as I mentioned, 50 billion empty plastic bottles, okay? Of course, this is all of water, okay? Water bottles, they generate each year. So that would give you the, what you call, the impact of these plastic bottles, really, okay? Now, in addition to that, to mention, of course, the cost of this plastic, which is being uh, uh, disposed, that also equal to about billion dollar. To mention this point here, now this wasted plastic, now on uh, this wasted plastic, okay, is worth at least one billion dollar. Okay, now, so this is one point to mention about this, uh, really the, to the impact of these plastic bottles. Okay, so as I mentioned, the wasted, these wasted plastic bottles is worth at least 1 million. Now, in addition to that, there are about 2 million tons of what you call, of single-use water bottles. We call it of single-use water bottles. Okay? About 2 million tons of single-use water bottles are dumped in the landfills. This is 2 million, almost every year. So 2 million tons of single use water plastic bottles are dumped in landfill. They dump this in the landfill, okay? Instead of being, of course, recycled. Did you follow this? So basically, there's someone. Now, to mention about, of course, what you call uh, that, because these most plastic are basically are non-degradable, okay? And it takes a very long time to degrade. So basically, this plastic requires more than a thousand years to be degraded. To mention this point, discarded water bottles, discarded water bottles,
Okay. Uh, takes more than takes more than a thousand years or years to biodegrade. Okay. So discarded water bottles take more than a thousand years to biodegrade. Uh, I think we follow that. Now they're going to go to a title here. Line with the water pollution. Now pollution. Your subtitle is pollution of rivers. Okay, lakes. and reservoirs. Okay, uh, of course, in a nutshell, of course, the river, if there is a pollution because it's always running, so there is more easily could be diluted and so on. Okay, while lakes, as a matter of fact, especially which has no uh, water coming, that it takes a very long time. It's so basically simple as this now. Uh, to start with this one, the flowing rivers and streams, the flowing rivers and streams, uh, simply going to mention here that flowing rivers and streams, these basically can recover rapidly. These can recover rapidly, what we call basically from Okay, moderate, recover quickly from moderate levels, okay, of biodegradable wastes, of biodegradable waste, okay. So as I mentioned, flowing rivers and stream can recover rapidly from moderate level of, or levels of biodegradable, what you call waste. Because what happened here, to mention the other point, because the waste are diluted by a flowing water. The wastes are, okay, uh, diluted, by a flowing water. And the other point also to mention, I'm going to finish this paragraph before I would end my lecture. Okay, so the waste are diluted by a flowing water and also basically by the action of the bacteria to so break it down and water and are also broken down by bacteria. So as I mentioned, the worst are diluted by a flowing water and also broken down by bacteria. Uh, but of course, this uh, method is not going to, uh, to be wo working if really the stream or the river is heavily by what you call polluted. So to mention this point here, here now. However, this process does not work However, this process does not work okay. when the stream or stream is overloaded with biodegradable. So, however, this process does not work when stream is overloaded with biodegradable pollutants called biodegradable pollutants. Okay. And also if this river, as a matter of fact, is, uh, for some reason it become uh, dried out or basically by putting a dam so that it's going, as a matter of fact, it's not, it's going not to work also. So that to mention too. So, okay. 
As I mentioned, however, this process does not work when stream is overloaded with biodegradable pollutant or also or when a drought or when drought damming from putting putting dam damming good to put dams damming or water diversions reduces its flow. Okay. The last line I'm going to mention before I would end my lecture here. So I, as I mentioned, however, this process does not work when the stream is overloaded with biodegradable pollutants or when drought, damming, or water diversion reduces its flow. Also to mention, and also this process does not eliminate And also, this process does not eliminate, which is basically a slowly biodegradable material and non biodegradable pollutants. And also, this process does not eliminate a slowly biodegradable material or and and non biodegradable pollutants. If you follow that, I will end my lecture, or unless you ask me to repeat it, I will mention to you again here. Okay. As I mentioned, however, this process does not work when the stream is overloaded with biodegradable pollutants or when drought, damming, or water diversion reduces its flow. Also, this process does not work, so it does not eliminate slowly biodegradable material and then biodegradable pollutant. So I will stop my lecture here at the moment. And do you have any question, please, or anything you want to know? Okay. Okay, then in that case, I will, what you call, try to talk to you, I guess, on uh, Friday. But also I mentioned, because really sometime I find some student that didn't show last week or other, and I encourage them this, uh, what you call, in this tutorial next coming Friday, please show up and show it. D don't feel what you call, stressed. Put anything you have, because this is really gradually, because as you know, the semester really is uh, ending very fast. huh? So basically I'm trying to help you to finish it in a good time, okay? Uh, so basically, and then, okay, uh, uh, take care, I guess, and we will talk to you on Friday. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. You're welcome.